It's absolutely incredible to be here early enough to see the people working on the floats and put them together and then be a part of it. And this is a huge part of Americana. Seeing it on TV is great, but being here is a whole different experience. I don't know anywhere else in the world where something of this magnitude happens this way. So it's bigger than life, I guess is the best way to put it. Recently, RFD TV went on the road to the famed Tournament of Roses Parade and Festival. Our cameras captured all of the excitement of this colorful week. We'll show you behind the scenes, from the parties to Equest Fest to the making of the floats. This year, RFD TV had a float, and at 85 feet, it was the longest in the parade. Like many of us, RFD TV's Patrick Gotch and his family made watching the Tournament of Roses Parade a New Year's Day tradition. You know, like most everybody else, uh, I grew up watching uh, the Rose Parade on, on New Year's Day with, with the family at, at our farmhouse, and it was just uh, always a great way to start off the new year. After coming out uh, three years ago, um, I just started making calls. Phoenix de Decorating seemed to be the the, the one of the key uh, producers, the decorators of floats. So I just called him up out of the blue and asked him, what's it take to get a float in the parade? Is it even possible? And, well, I mean, it's, it's just a dream come true, come true for us, honestly. I mean, I remember watching the Rose Bowl parade. Um, every year, my dad would wake us up and we'd grudgingly, you know, walk to the TV. And once we started watching it, we just couldn't take our eyes off of it. And he's always loved parades. And for us to actually be able to be a part of a parade, um, it just really shows how far we really have come. Country music star and historian Marty Stewart hosts a music show on RFD TV, and he came out to be a part of the festivities. On New Year's Day, I would always watch the Tournament of Roses parade, mostly for all the beautiful saddles, the bowling saddles, and the parade costumes, because you couldn't see that in the South, nowhere in the world, you know, down in Mississippi. I don't know of anybody that had a parade saddle at that time, and it was just a majestic kind of moment. Uh, it was always just kind of a traditional way to start New Year's. Yeah. <laughs> Happy New Year. For most horse lovers, the Tournament of Roses Parade is defined by the matching golden palominos ridden by the Long Beach Mounted Police. There are 18 equestrian groups in the parade this year, and they come from all across the United States. The Tournament of Roses festivities kicked off with a grand reception for the equestrian groups in the historic Union Station. Built in 1939, it is known as the last of the great railway stations built in the United States, with its massive and ornate waiting room and adjacent ticket concourse. Everyone comes in their finest costumes, from the Charros to the California Firefighters. There's lots of bling from the cowgirls from Arizona, and the All-American Cowgirl Chicks, RFD TV's equestrian ambassadors, led the way on the dance floor. I put on my custom-made hat with roses and all, and RFD TV cameras were rolling on Sunday at Equest Fest. It's an exhibition of the equestrian groups participating in the parade. Horses and mules, large and small, make up the 18 equine groups that participate in the Tournament of Roses Parade. And since they arrive in town early for the livestock to acclimate, Equest Fest was born. A chance to demonstrate the horses and riding club's maneuvers and versatility that doesn't show while marching down the five and a half mile parade route. They put on quite a show at the Los Angeles Equestrian Center. Brad Ratliff is the chairman of the equestrian groups. Now, there's some criteria for being in the parade. You don't just take any group. No, we have about 18 slots this year, and we had about 53 uh, different applications come in. So what we try to do is each year, each parade has a theme, so we like to do our best to pick the groups that will best represent the theme. We also like a variety of different breeds and different groups to keep it fresh every year. So we, we do our best to try and make it nice and happy for everybody. Corky Conzaneri is the Tournament of Roses president. We're really, really proud of the parade and really what we do every New Year's for the New Year's Day celebration. The spectacular trick riding and precision drills of the All-American Cowgirl Chicks wowed the crowd. 
It was just awesome to come and be a part of this event. We're so proud to be from Texas and live this lifestyle. We really, truly are rodeo tough cowgirls and are just honored to be a part of such a great event. Patrick Gotch founded RFD TV to promote all aspects of agriculture and related activities. He felt being involved with the Tournament of Roses was a natural. To, to broadcast uh, Equus Fest uh, from start to finish, two hours where they really got a chance to show America what they really do and what their, their organization's about or what their horses uh, breeds about or so on uh, is something that uh, um, I know they appreciate and again that's why we're here. That's, that's what RFD TV is about, to go out and, 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 and broadcast things that, that the urban based uh, uh, networks ignore. Phoenix decorators won the approval of Patrick and Raquel. They are a family operation, much like RFD TV. Chris Lofthouse and his family work in the business started by his late father. His wife Lynn is the floral director, and his sister Michelle is the artist and designer. This year, Michelle came up with a, with a fantastic design that, that really depicts uh, what RFD TV is trying to get out there to the public. I love the RFD channel. It's one of my favorite channels. This subject matter is dear to my heart. I mean, I have a Clydesdale in my front yard. I grow giant pumpkins. I grow ornamental corn. I, I love uh, working the soil. So it's all my favorite things. So it was a natural. RFD TV really is, is four or five television networks rolled into one. It's, it's an ag network. It's an equine network. It's a rural lifestyle network. It's a a classic country and entertainment network and then uh, also the auctions, uh, the business side of, of rural America. So uh, we wanted something to represent each of those five segments on, on the float, led by a big classic uh, antique tractor, uh, you know, which really has kind of led our network into, uh, into uh, credibility around the country. Once the design was approved, the float building process began. Floats um, have parameters that the Tournament of Roses give us. They have to be no more than 17 feet tall, 18 feet wide. You can go as long as you want. You can go as tall as you want, but you better be able to have the capability of getting them back down to 17 feet, and that's why some of the pieces on this float fold down. Well, the windmill um, was actually a very, very important part of RFD TV, so it is one of the biggest icons on the float to represent the network. If there is an inch visible on a float, it must be covered with organic material. And that can be flowers or a dry deck, as we call it, which is some uh, seeds, grains, anything like that. So it's, it's quite something, and it was the result of hours of conversation between the designer and the florists and the decorators. Lorianne Crook of TV's team, Crook and Chase, came in a few days early to learn about the floats and prepare for RFD TV's broadcast of the parade. There are so many things I never knew. I did not know that on the RFD TV float that the, the bushel baskets would be full of real produce. I thought it would just be some fake things or some plastic things. Oh no, they really had it piled with real potatoes and cabbage and squash, melons and pumpkins everywhere. So the people riding the float, if they get hungry, no problem. <laughs> Lynn Lofthouse is the floral director. I know where dry material is going to go. It just, is, it just calls out. Now, fresh is always on the deck. Uh, it always includes, for the most part, roses, gerbers, and carnations. The sheep is uh, natural cotton. He's all little curlies, and that's all done by hand, obviously. And uh, then there's some dry materials around the face, some spices. Love the sheep. All the cotton on it just looks like a big teddy bear. There are literally tens of thousands of flowers on this float and all of the others. Many of the flowers are placed in vials filled with water to stay fresh. And it took hundreds of volunteers. We had over 200 FFA members that came out from the state of California. We worked with the different local chapters and their advisors to get together a group. Each group averaged anywhere from five to about 35 different people. And they all came out for eight hour shifts and they helped decorate the float. And then we also had the 4-H participate as well. They had their members come up. The whole experience has been great. Everybody's just kind of pitched in. I think everyone's been very amazed with how hands-on RFD TV is compared to other folks. 
um, we are a get it done type of group and we were there to the last minute pushing on the last pedals with them. The biggest challenge of this float, believe it or not, is the size. This is an excess of 80 feet long. So getting it maneuvered um, from the two locations and in and out of the building has actually been the biggest challenge for this guy. It's a big float. There's been a lot of action the last three days in, in, uh, in uh, watching the, the float take shape and have flowers put on it. And, and uh, it's just been a wonderful experience. The buildings housing the floats were buzzing with activity for weeks leading up to the moment that the judges walked in. Then it was silent. For me personally, that was my awe moment when everything was done and now I'm really enjoying the experience and loving every minute of it. A lot of RFTV TV viewers came up and um, you could see the, the smiles on their faces. and uh, So I know our viewers are going to get it and, and, uh, and, and that's... That's the uh, whose judgment we care most about. I think we were more focused on having fun and smiling and mingling with the crowds that we didn't even pay attention to the judges. Marty Stewart and Connie Smith performed on the float and gave it the live spirit of RFD TV's country music. The mixture of flowers, I mean, on TV you can see, but when you get up close and you see the orchids mixed in with the asters and the, and the roses mixed in with, with the, you know, everything. And, you know, the whole thing is so organic and it's what RFD is about. New Year's Eve means early to bed, early to rise, and some people don't get any sleep at all. Lori Ann Crook and Charlie Chase took their place high above the parade route in a prime spot while I was right on the street, close enough to touch the horses and floats. Well, Happy New Year, everybody, from all of us here at RFG TV. Happy New Year to you, partner. And you, Lorianne, and all of you watching. I tell you, what, you know, this is the Valley Hunt Club, and they were established in 1888, and in 1890, this is the organization. All the folks on the RFD float had a great time introducing the fans to the rural way of life. We're unique in that, uh... We're broadcasting the parade. We broadcast the uh, Equus Fest. Uh, we've got a float in the parade. So we've had the opportunity to de deal with uh, uh, many different aspects here with the, uh, the, the Rose uh, Committee to have a, a television network that um, uh, is so in touch with, with the earth, uh, like RFD TV is something that I, I believe the, the Tournament of Roses Committee does want to, uh, associated with the organization. We want this to be uh, a tradition at RFD TV to do broadcast Equus Fest, to broadcast the Tournament of Roses to Parade, and to hopefully have a, a float in the parade for many years to come. Come out to the Tournament of Roses Parade. The four or five days here where you can see Equus Fest and, and you can see the floats being built and you can watch the Tournament of Roses Parade and then maybe get a ticket to the Rose Bowl game. Uh, it's something that everyone should do. Uh, I don't care who you are, where you're from, or what your interests are. This is a, a great week, and then uh, come out and enjoy the parade someday.